All right, now let's talk about the final element of Houdini, which is instancing or, or instances. So I'm gonna turn off, let's turn off what we got here. Let's turn off the splines and let's turn off the cloud volume and let's turn off the renderer. And I'm just gonna um, go down here to where the instances are and then let's turn those on. And I'm just gonna, um, let's grab camera two and move on over to where these flowers are. So we've got these flower instances that we've created. Uh, let's kind of look into how this is actually being displayed because it's actually being displayed in a different way. If we dive inside the geometry, we can see that we, all we have here is a bunch of points and there are two outputs. Uh, one of these outputs is set to display in the viewport and the other one is just set to uh, is what is going to be rendered by Redshift. And if we look here, these two wrangles are assigning basically our flower geometry that we have written out. Now, where is this coming from? This is actually looking to a folder on disk that has a, uh, a flower.bgo.sc file. That's a Houdini geometry file. And this one over here is pointing to a flower.rs file. And basically that is how the, I've decided to um, assign my geometry to these points. It looks at these attributes, this instance file attribute, and it knows to uh, put that geometry file that's on, that sits on disk onto each one of those points. If I pull my project uh, directory over here, you can actually see in the geo folder, we have a flower.bgo.sc and a flower.rs file. And they're pretty heavy geometry and that's why we're using instancing for this. If we were to just uh, render these as regular polygons, it would really bog the renderer down, especially with all the other geometry that's in the scene. So when I created this, essentially what I did was I started, if we just hop into the main um, network that created this by hitting this little arrow key and then hitting F, you can see that this is where the instancing setup was uh, created here. So um, more or less, I've created a, you know, a bunch of points. I'm just going to unlock the uh, camera too. And I, I'm gonna show, I've created a bunch of points here that are sort of kind of bulging out like so. And then over here, I'm actually importing my uh, flower file. So I've got my flower file sitting on, on disk, which is this flower.bgosc. So I had created this in a different project and imported it in right here and then assigned a material to it. So I assigned this flower material to it and then I wrote it out to a Redshift proxy uh, flower output. And you can see that this archive just wrote out that flower.rs file like so. Um, and that's what has been written out right next to this file. So basically I've brought the geo in, um, assigned a material to it, and then kicked it out. So we have this material already in our network. Um, it was in here when we started this uh, course. So if we go over to our flower material, you can see that we have built a shader around attributes that existed on this uh, flower. See, we've got this BB attribute that we're using for the bounding box and an edge fall off that we created. And we can uh, visualize those. If we uh, look at our flower and look at the info, we can see the bounding box information for each petal. So you can see that I'd saved a, a bounding information so that more or less gives you a, a map um, down the length and across the uh, petals. Also, there is a, um, a fall off attribute. This kind of falls off from the, it's an edge fall off um, so that you can kind of color the petals differently around the edges. And then uh, another thing we've got is the central fall off. This is a fall off that kind of emanates from the uh, center of each petal. It's pretty similar to the edge fall off, except that it, um, it doesn't have like the same value on all the tips and then um, over here, the, the edge fall off is the opposite. So this, this fall off is actually a mixture between the fall off center and the edge fall off. But I have all these attributes on here nonetheless, so that we can, um, you know, kind of control the shader uh, based off of the, you know, position of where we are on the pedal and stuff like that. So now this is written out to disk as a Redshift proxy. Right here, I just, in, in this network, if I just click render to disk, it has rendered out that flower Redshift proxy and it has baked the material into it. So if I go back up here and we get our camera and let's go to camera two and fire off a render. And let's, uh, oh, I gotta set this to camera two down here as well. And turn off the render and turn it back on. And let's get rid of this the render region, I'm gonna get rid of that. And you can see that um, that material is on our flower, even though we don't have a material assigned to our flower right now or anything like that. 